Hello and welcome to This Month in GK, episode one. The first episode of the year, we are going to actually bring in a little bit more from the beginning of the year as well. My name is Mofi. I'm a developer advocate in the GK team, and I have two very important people here with me. All right. Thanks, Mofi. The uh, very important Mofi. Yeah, great to be here. My name is uh, yeah, Gary Singh. I'm one of the uh, product managers for GKE. I uh, do a lot of uh, outward facing work, and I get to uh, travel around with uh, Mofi and uh, Abdel, who's going to introduce himself as well. Hi, everyone. So this is Abdel. I'm a developer advocate in the GKE team. So starting with something I'm super excited about, we announced this at Next, which is something we call the GK Inference Gateway. So the GK Inference Gateway is an extension of an upstream inference extension in the Gateway API project, specifically built for GKE. We use this as a way to allow users to deploy multiple LLMs on uh, GKE and intelligently pick which LLM to route traffic to based on the characteristic of the request. This is important because your LLM traffic is not like your web traffic. The connection times can be very long sometimes. So the GK inference gateway is a very specific gateway designed for LLM traffic. And in the context of this work, we also have been collaborating with ByteDance and with Red Hat to make inference better. We are contributing upstream to the Gateway API inference extension. And we also introduced something called the Leader Worker Set, which is an API in Kubernetes that allows users to split big models across multiple nodes when a single node cannot fit the model anymore. Next up on our list, very excited to talk about a new feature near and dear to my heart called Container Optimized Compute. Now, this is generally available on autopilot today. It's really designed for much faster auto scaling, almost near real time reactions, better right sizing for workloads. But most importantly, it really makes auto scaling work. <laughs> In the past, you wanted to right size, so you want to have as few nodes as possible, right? And then you want to use something like the HPA to more reactively scale. By the way, we've also imp greatly improved the speed and performance of the HPA as part of this. But then typically, you may have to wait for a node to scale up, right, while you scale up a pod. With COC, this is now instantaneous. With this new type of underlying compute that we have, you'll now see us be able to scale in under 10 seconds. So this is super exciting. We look forward to seeing this out there and you don't have to do anything to use it. You just need to be on the autopilot rapid channel right now, any 132 or later release, and it's just there for free. For the GK users running AML workload, we have a bunch of new accelerators for you to play with. We have the TPU V6 e Trillium now generally available on GK. For our GPU users, we also have the new A3 Ultra and A4 machines generally available. A3 Ultra comes with the new H200 GPUs from NVIDIA and A4 comes with the new B200 GPUs with NVIDIA with significant improvement in performance. So next is MCO, multi-cluster orchestrator. You know that old joke of, do you want to run one big cluster or multiple small clusters? Now you can actually run multiple big clusters if you want with MCO. So multi-cluster orchestrator is a service that generates workload placement recommendations for your workload. So if you have multiple clusters, MCO will tell you exactly in which cluster to put your workload depending on availability of hardware, capacity, and availability of the region sometimes. And that service plugs into your CD tool, like Argo CD, for example, and it can generate the recommendation that Argo can read to be able to deploy the workload in one specific cluster. We recently released the C4A machine type, which would be our latest generation ARM processors. And we're very excited about this, really taking ARM more mainstream in Google Cloud. This is available both on GKE Standard and GKE Autopilot. Awesome for specifically like single threaded type applications or single core applications where price per core performance is important. It's available in most regions today and super easy to use. There are a number of observability improvements for GKE users. You can now enable data center GPU manager on GKE to automatically connect metrics and usage for your GPU. Automatic application monitoring also allows our users to automatically collect a bunch of Prometheus metrics from a number of applications that are most commonly used, like Apache Airflow, RabbitMQ, Istio, VLLM, TGI, TensorFlow, or many of the popular LLM serving stack. Just by deploying any of these applications, GK will automatically be able to detect that application is running on your cluster and start collecting Prometheus metrics and create a dashboard on your behalf to show you exactly what's happening in your cluster in a given time. With GKE, People had at some point to choose actually whether they want to create a private cluster, a public cluster, a private control plane, or a public control plane. GK connectivity is a feature that just allows customers to mix and match, choose which one to do when 
depending on uh, what they want to do. It also can be toggled on and on per node pool. And the most important thing with GKE connectivity is that you don't have to choose this when you create the cluster. You can start with a private cluster and then turn it public or the other way around. And you can also start with a private control plane and then make it public and the other way around. Another area that we've been working super hard on has really been in storage, both for just any type of stateful workloads as well as for AIML. Really interesting feature that just came out is what we call GKE Data Cache which allows us to basically manage a set of local SSDs acting as a cache for persistent disk. Normally we had users try to manually configure this, right? They might mount local SSDs, figure out how to bootstrap a cache. We've now made this automatic through configuration. And some of our early results have been amazing. We've seen an increase in performance and latency for Postgres workloads of up to 82%. And people who are running web-based IDEs on demand on GKE have actually seen improvements up to 600% in performance and latency. So again, another easy feature to uh, take a look at, configurable in your YAML, so give it a try. A new startup latency dashboard became available in the GK Observability tab. With this new dashboard, you'll be able to tell when a pod is slow to start, and you'll be able to detect when a pod startup is slowed by node startup or pod startup specifically. Last but not least, and although this is not a GKE specific feature, I managed to actually sneak it in, it's we launched a new cloud region in Sweden. Europe North 2 is open for business. You can deploy GKE, you can deploy GCE and Cloud Run if you want. I managed to slide it in because I live in Sweden and I care about this. And that's it, folks. This was our first episode of this month in GKE. Technically, it was this quarter in GKE. We look forward to bring you more of these every month. GKE cool stuff. Thank you for being with us and see you next time. Take care, everybody.